Good evening. This meeting is hereby called to order. I am Rita Scott, Chair of the MARTA Board of Directors, and I come before you today to share MARTA's ongoing commitment to physical responsibility and to review the proposed fiscal year 2022 operating and capital budgets. Due to the state of emergency declared by the governor of Georgia, public health concerns created by the COVID-19 pandemic, and the safety and well-being of our communities, this MARTA budget hearing is being held virtually. MARTA is streaming on Facebook Live and YouTube Live, and MARTA has also provided a dial-in number to conduct this hearing to consider the proposed fiscal year 2022 operating and capital budgets. Closed captioning is also used and a sign language interpreter is present during the hearing. The MARTA board, when making the final decision on the proposed budget, will consider comments received today, along with comments made via email and voicemail. Please be assured that MARTA is interested in your comments. Individuals wishing to provide comments during this hearing may post comments in the comment section of the Facebook or YouTube stream. Persons desiring to provide oral comments about the proposed operating and capital budget may call 404-848-5299 and submit comments via voicemail message. Written comments can also be sent via email to publichearinginfo at itsmarta.com. Persons may also provide written comments to us by mail to MARTA External Affairs, 2424 Piedmont Road, Northeast, Atlanta, Georgia, 30324. The complete draft operating and capital budgets can be viewed online at itsmarta.com. Physical copies of the proposed budgets will be available for review at MARTA headquarters, 2424 Piedmont Road until May 17, 2021. At this time, we, for, we will hear from Raj Sernath, Chief Financial Officer, who will provide an overview of the proposed physical year 2022 operating and capital budgets. Thank you, Mr. Shortnut. Thank you, Chairperson Scott, and good evening, everyone. My name is Raj Srinath. I'm the Chief Financial Officer with MARDA. Before I present the details on the fiscal year 22 budget, let me go through the budget development framework, the process, and the timelines. As you can see on the slide here, the fiscal year 22 budget premise or the framework is it supports MARDA's strategic priorities, it supports updated service levels, of course it provides financial stability and sustainability and advances our capital program. Equally importantly, it delivers on the 15th Amendment obligations and it addresses the state of good repair needs. And the fiscal year 22 budget development timelines are, the first one was the board briefing, which we did on May 5th, followed by two public hearings, the first of which we conducted yesterday at 11 a.m. This is the second and the last of the public hearings. Based on the input we get from the public hearings and from the jurisdictions and our board, the proposed budget will be provided to each of the jurisdictions and it will be taken to the Business Management Committee for approval for recommendation to the full board at the Business Management Committee meeting on May 27th, and it will be taken to the full board on June 10th for adoption, which is the final step in putting the fiscal year 22 budget in place. 
As I mentioned earlier, it supports MARDA's strategic priorities, which are consistently provide excellence in customer service, deliver the capital programs with speed and efficiency, demonstrate fiscal responsibility, last but not the least, strengthen the MARDA brand. Some of the key assumptions for the fiscal year 22 proposed operating budget are, we used the latest forecast that was available to us from Georgia State University on the sales tax growth in the region. That's what we assumed, so it is the most current information we have. And the fiscal year fair revenues, or the fair box revenues, were assumed to be roughly $60.3 million. And just to provide some context, fiscal year 21, which we're currently in, the fair box revenues were $44 million. Pre-COVID, that was fiscal year 19, the last full fiscal year before COVID-19 hit us, the fair box revenues or the fair revenues were $130 million. So this year, fiscal year 21, we expect to receive approximately a third of that. And going into fiscal year 22, our fair box revenues are expected to be about 60, or in other words, less than half of that. What that means is, you know, we have recovered or we are slowly recovering from the fair box revenue losses we suffered as a result of COVID-19, but we still have about at least three years before we get back to where we were in fiscal year 19. And with respect to labor, the non-represented employees did not receive any wage increase in fiscal year 21. So for fiscal year 22, we are assuming an average wage increase of 3% for non-represented employees. And for represented employees, that's the union employees, they will be getting the raises based on the contact we have with them. So they will be getting a 3% increase, which they're getting right now through January of 2022, after which they will get an increase of 2%. That's consistent with the contract we have with them. And American Rescue Plan funds. This is the third of the stimulus packages that Congress passed. The first one being the Coronavirus Aid Relief and Economic Security Act, or the CARES Act, which I'll be referring to as we go along in the presentation. And the second one was the Coronavirus Response and Relief Supplemental Appropriation on the CRISA funds. And the last one is the American Rescue Plan, or the ARP Act funds. And we expect to use about $55 million of that to support our operations in fiscal year 22, and roughly about $29 million of that to support our operations in fiscal year 23. And the remaining $200 million is yet to be allocated on projects with the board deems appropriate going forward. The bottom line is the fiscal year 22 operating budget will be at or below our fiscal year 21 operating budget. Actually, it'll be a tad below that. I'll go through the numbers as we go through the presentation. On the next slide is a summary of our service plan, which we plan on offering. This is for all three modes of our service, that is bus, rail, and streetcar. As you can see from the top box on the slide, our headcount or the operator headcount for fiscal year 22 remains the same as it was in fiscal year 21, which means we are not cutting any service. To the contrary, we are adding service. In fact, we increased our bus service on April 24th on about 50 routes, which we had cut or stopped service. All of that were added back, and they will continue into fiscal year 22. So our service, we, as in when the ridership comes back, we expect to increase the service going forward. On the next slide is a summary of the operating revenues and expenses for fiscal year 22 compared to fiscal years 21, 20, and 19. As I mentioned earlier, the last two columns, if you will, the uh, blue and the orange boxes refer to fiscal year 21 and fiscal year 22 budget. Fiscal year 22 expense budget or operating expense budget is expected to be $557.1 million. That's slightly lower than $557.9 million of operating budget we had for 
fiscal year 21. We've, we've got about six major sources of revenues for our operations, the sales and the ad valorem tax, passenger revenues or the fare revenues, the federal formula funds, I will ex expand on that as we go through that, and the CARES Act, which I mentioned earlier, is the Coronavirus Aid Relief and the Economic Security Act funds, and the American Rescue Plan, or the ARP funding, and other transit-related revenues, which are predominantly our advertisement revenues, transit-oriented development revenues, and lease revenues we get on real estate. And here is an apportionment of, of, apportionment of the various sources of revenues we get to fund our operations. The biggest source of revenue comes from our sales tax. Approximately about $263 million or 47% of our operating expenses are funded from sales taxes. That is the biggest source of revenue for our operations, followed by federal formula funds, which we get from FTR, the Federal Transit Administration, to support operations, mostly in the form of supporting our preventive maintenance we need. That's the second biggest source, about $73 million, or 13% of our overall expenditures. And the third biggest source of revenue we get to support operations are the passenger revenues or the fare box revenues. That's about $60 million is what we expect to get, which is about 11%. As I said, the sales and the ad valorem tax, which is our biggest source of revenue for operations, we saw a decline in fiscal year 2020 compared to the revenues we received in fiscal year 19 solely as a result of COVID-19 and because we, were in, we entered into a recession, at least for the first three months of the pandemic in 20, which I'm pleased to say that we have very nicely recovered as we progress into fiscal year 21. We expect to see an increase of about 3% compared to the revenues we received in fiscal year 20, and fiscal year 22 is expected to be about a 3.2% growth compared to 21, followed by an extremely robust growth of 7.8% 7, 7 in 23, which again is forecasted to grow at about 5% in fiscal year 24. On our passenger or fare revenues, it's slightly a different story. We had $130 million of revenues in fiscal year 19. That was down to $98 million in fiscal year 20. That's when the COVID-19 hit us, all the way down to $44 million, about a third of what we received in 19 in fiscal year 21. Slowly, we expect that to grow back up to about $60 million in fiscal year 22. And in fiscal year 24, we expect that to reach about $115 million. So it's going to take about f at least four years to go back to the levels of fare box revenues we received pre-COVID. That was in fiscal year 19. Uh, the big thing is that I'm pleased to say that there is no fare increase factored in in our fiscal year 22 budget. The last fare increase was implemented about 10 years ago in 2011, and we don't expect to implement another fare increase going into fiscal year 22. The Congress passed three separate legislations as stimulus packages as in the aftermath of COVID-19. The first one was a $298 million allocation to MARDA on the CARES Act, which we applied to our operating expenditures in fiscal year 20, 21, and the remaining we expect to apply that in fiscal year 22. The second installment of the stimulus package with the, which Congress passed was $33.5 million. We expect to allocate all of that to our capital programs, our state of good repair needs in fiscal year 22 and 23. And the last installment, which I briefly touched on uh, in the previous slide, of $284 million, 84 of which we expect to apply to our operating budget in fiscal years 22 and 23. And the remaining $200 million will be applied to capital programs as determined by the board going forward. 
Here is how our, our expenses are funded through the operating revenues we get. The biggest portion of our expenditures, of course, is labor. About two-thirds of our expenditures go towards labor cost. When I say labor cost, it's salaries, wages, overtime, healthcare cost, pension benefits, and other fringe benefits. All of that constitute about two-thirds of our operating budget, or 65%, roughly about $360 million. The second biggest portion of the pie of operating budget is our contractual services, which are our information technology license fees, our fair equipment maintenance, as well as maintenance expenditures on our facilities which support our operations. The third source of revenue, I'm sorry, expense, about $38 million is spent, or 7%, on mobility services, which, are, which is our paratransit service. On the labor cost, which I touched on previously, as I said, the non-represented employee raise is assumed to be 3% on average, and the represented employee raise is consistent with the contract. It's 3% through January 22, and 2% in February 22 and thereafter. We also expect a vacancy savings. Historically, at least the last five years, MARDA has averaged a vacancy rate anywhere between 7.5 to 8.5%, which is kind of consistent across the industry. All transit agencies have vacancies at any given time for a host of reasons, including attrition, retirement, and all that. So we have experienced about 7.5 to 8.5% eight, over the last five years. So we are assuming, on a, to be on a conservative basis, about 3% vacancy savings. It could be higher, but that's what we have assumed in the budget. Here is how our fiscal year 22 budget compares to the previous three years. Fiscal year 22 budget is expected to be a balanced budget. In fact, we uh, expect a very modest surplus of about $2 million in our budget for 22, and it is slightly lower at $557.1 million compared to our budget of fiscal year 2021, which was at $557.9 million. Like any operating budget, you know, it's not without risk, and some of the risks are the COVID-19 pandemic is still with us. We're not completely out of the woods, so that the impact is still lingering, and we are seeing that you know, continued decline in fair revenues. Although it has come back up, it's nowhere near the levels we saw pre-COVID-19. And to state the obvious because of that, we have ridership issues and we have lower fair revenues. And there is also economic uncertainty. As I said earlier, approximately half of our operating expenses are supported by our sales tax revenues and sales tax revenues are highly dependent on economic growth or decline. So that's still a, a possibility. We may see a decline in our sales tax revenues. And the fuel prices. Coincidentally, you know, there was a ransomware attack on one of the biggest oil lines on the East Coast a few days ago. That has resulted in a shortage of oil supply and the prices have gone up. Although MARDA is not very reliant on diesel um, the fuel, because 70% of our fleet is supported by natural gas, still that could impact us a little bit in the short run at least. And healthcare cost, that's always been an issue. You know, healthcare cost can go up and has gone up. So over the last few years, we have seen a little bit moderation of those growth, but you never know. I've seen in my lifetime healthcare cost going up into the high single digits year over year. That can still happen. And last but not the uh, least, pension cost. Pension costs are very much dependent on the performance of the stock market because we do invest in them. Last two years have been very good, and this year continues to be good, although today I believe the markets took a little bit, you know, tilt to the downside. Uh, we hope it will come back up. So that's always a risk. That concludes my presentation on the operating budget. Now, let me turn this over to Larry Prescott, our interim chief of capital programs, and Kevin Hurley, 
the deputy CFO to go through fiscal year 22's proposed capital budget. Thank you. Thank you, Raj. Good evening. As with every year's fiscal year budget, we have tall orders to fill in order to keep MARTA advancing as a state-of-the-art transit authority while remaining physically responsible in providing system-wide projects, expansion corridors, station rehabilitation, and new facilities, as well as utilizing new funding where available. Our assumptions are based on active projects under contract or in procurement, which meet our policy directives here shown. We have taken the 220 plus proposed projects and prioritize them based on these five key performance indicators while incorporating expansion and enhancement as well. Here is our program structure with five areas of asset classes based on anticipated FDA categories. These are broken out into multiple areas of assets in each one of these uh, federal buckets, as we say. Now taking those five program categories and putting them into our 10-year capital program, you can see we have vehicles, facilities, maintenance of way, operating systems, and non-assets with a fiscal year budget of, for FY22 of $481 million. Now I'll play tag uh, team with uh, Kevin on the financials. Thank you, Larry. This next slide represents the MARTA State of Good Repair 10-year capital improvement program. The balanced program is funded by utilizing a prior year carryover, sales tax, federal and state grants to include CRISA stimulus funding, prior year sales tax carryover generated by the use of CARES Act funds for operations, and debt issues necessary to support the expenditures for the capital program and debt service. I would like to point out the two notes below the table relating to debt issuance. The timing and amount of debt required will vary depending on execution of the capital program and the final allocation of ARP funding. In addition, there's $200 million in anticipated ARP funds that are not allocated in this plan. Now we move from the 10-year capital plan, State of Good Repair capital plan, to focus on the fiscal year 2022 capital sources and uses. This table presents the FY22 capital sources and uses of funds for the, more Mar for the MARTA State of Good Repair capital improvement program. Please note the beginning balance from prior year sales tax is $20 million followed by FY 2022 sources from sales tax, federal grants, CRISA stimulus funding, prior year sales tax carryover, interest income, and bond proceeds. The FY 2022 sources of funds total $622.3 million, and when combined with the prior year carryover, we have a total sources of funds available of $642.3 million to support the capital program. The uses of funds include $481 million in capital program expenditures and $158.2 million for debt service payments on previously issued bonds for a total uses of funds of $639.2 million which leaves a year-end balance of $3.1 million to be used in FY23 or beyond. Here's a picture of the FY22 capital sources of funding in the form of a pie chart. The pie chart presents a good picture of the magnitude of each source. Note the largest sources are sales tax, providing $236.5 million, and debt issue proceeds comprising $220 million in anticipated funding. These are followed by federal and state grants, inclusive of Chris's stimulus funds and MARTA's standard grant program funds, 
which provide $16.5 million and $67.1 million respectively. The final sources are a prior year sales tax surplus of $81.7 million and interest income of half a million dollars. The total sources of funds are $642.3 million. Now we move into the uses, FY22 capital uses of funds in a pie chart format to present the magnitude of investment by FTA asset class. Note the largest is the systems asset class in the amount of $144 million, followed by vehicles using $119.1 million, facilities at $111.9 million, and non-asset projects accounting for $84.5 million. Maintenance of way is programmed at $21.5 million, and debt service on outstanding bonds is anticipated to be $158.2 million. This brings the total anticipated expenses to $639.2 million for fiscal year 2022. With that, I'll hand it back to Larry to discuss some of the major projects. Thank you. As I stated earlier, we have 220 plus projects. What we're seeing here is our top 10 projects in the State of Good Repair Program by cost. As you can see, there's a good mix of categories with vehicles, rehabilitation, various systems, replacements, and upgrades. These 10 projects alone consume approximately 56% of the FY22 capital budget. That leaves the remaining budget of $212 million to cover the remaining 200 plus projects where possible. Now I'm going to turn it over to Kevin to talk about the More MARTA program. Thanks, Larry. Now we move to the More MARTA City of Atlanta 10 year capital program. This balanced program utilizes prior year carryover from the City of Atlanta reserve funds, sales tax, federal grants to include potential grants, as well as future year debt issues to support the 10 year plan, capital expenditures, and debt service. Next slide. Now we move from the City of Atlanta 10-year plan to focus on fiscal year 2022 More MARTA City of Atlanta. This table presents the, the FY 2022 capital sources and uses of funds for the More MARTA City of Atlanta. I wanted to take a minute to walk through the City of Atlanta Reserve and present how the beginning balance is determined. Please note that the beginning balance in fiscal year 2021 was $97.3 million. We anticipate a total of $73.4 million in proceeds from the City of Atlanta's half penny sales tax in 2021. Of this, $36.7 million will be used for existing operations, while the remaining $36.7 million is placed into reserves. During the course of fiscal year 2021, we reduced the reserve for capital project expenditures, estimated to be $11 million, and streetcar operations of $5.4 million. We then add back the investment income earned on the reserve portfolio of $0.8 million. This results in a beginning balance of $118.4 million in the More MARTA City of Atlanta Reserve that can be utilized to support the fiscal year 2022 capital program. We then move into the sources of funding for fiscal year 2022 itself. We anticipate $29.6 million in sales tax, net of capital project expenditures and streetcar operations, and potential federal grants of $4 million. This makes up $33.6 million of funding from fiscal year 2022 that brings the total sources available to $152 million to support the City of Atlanta capital program. 
The City of Atlanta uses of funds are programmed at $50 million for capital project expenditures in fiscal year 2022, which leaves an outstanding balance of $102 million to be used in future years. I'll now turn it back to Larry to discuss the City of Atlanta projects. Thank you. Now looking specifically at the fiscal year 22, only for the Mormar Program Atlanta budget projections, these projects have been scoped to fit within the $50 million allocated to fiscal year budget. Now for reference, BRT stands for Bus Rapid Transit, LRT is Light Rail Transit, ART is Arterial Rapid Transit, and the TC stands for Transit Center. Currently, the Capitol Avenue Summerhill BRT project is in final design. Projects in preliminary design, we have the Streetcar East extension and the Bankhead Station platform extension. Transitioning from preliminary to final design, we have the Five Point Station enhancement transfer, transformation, as well as the Cleveland and Metropolitan Avenue arterial rapid transit projects. The remaining projects are in planning or concept phases. Now back to Kevin. All right, thank you, Larry. We're, we now move in to the More Marta Clayton County 10-year capital program. This is also a balanced program that utilizes prior year carryover from the Clayton County Reserve Funds, sales tax, federal grants to include potential federal grants, as well as future year debt issues to support the 10-year plan capital expenditures and debt service. Now we likewise move from the Clayton County 10-year plan to focus on fiscal year 2022 for more Marta Clayton, Clayton County. This table presents the fiscal year 2022 capital sources and uses of funds for more Marta Clayton County. The same methodology is used to derive the beginning balance for Clayton County. The beginning balance for fiscal year 2021 was $124.3 million. It is anticipated there will be $55.6 million in proceeds from the Clayton County full penny, of which $27.8 million will be used in existing operations, and the remaining $27.8 million will be placed into reserves. During the course of fiscal year 2021, we anticipate reducing the reserves by $4.8 million for capital project expenditures. We then add back investment income of $1 million, which brings the beginning balance for fiscal year 2022 to $148.3 million in more Marta Clayton County reserves to support the F fiscal year 2022 capital program. Anticipated sources of funding for fiscal year 2022 include $28.4 million in sales tax, $13.7 million in awarded federal grants, and $6.7 million in potential federal grants, bringing the fiscal year 2022 sources to $48.8 million and total sources available to support the Mormar to Clayton County capital plan to $197.1 million. The fiscal year 2022 capital uses of funds for Clayton County are programmed at $60 million for capital project expenditures, which would leave an ending balance of $137.1 million to be used in future years. I'll once again turn it back to Larry to present the Clayton County projects. Thank you. Here again, specifically for the fiscal year 22 only, more water program Clayton County budget projections. These projects have been scoped to fit within the $60 million fiscal year budget. Again, for reference, HCT stands for high capacity transit. All of these projects are in planning and or are transitioning into preliminary design. And that concludes our capital budget program pre presentation. Thank you.
We want everyone who wishes to do so to have the opportunity to provide comments. Therefore, I would like to note that you, that you may submit comments by May 17, 2021, for consideration by the MARTA Board of Directors. You may do so via written comments, which may be sent to the following address. MARTA, External Affairs, 2424 Piedmont Road Northeast, Atlanta, Georgia, 30324, or emailed to publichearinginfo at itsmarta.com. To provide oral comments about the proposed operating and capital budget, you may call 404-848-5299 and submit comments via voicemail message. Thank you for your participation at this public hearing, which is now adjourned. Good night.